Hello and welcome to the first challenge of the 2024 MEC season. My name is David Brown. I'm an associate professor of finance at the University of Arizona and the founder of the MECC. Throughout this year, we're going to be presenting challenges that combine both Excel skills and personal finance skills. So this is the first step in that process. Uh, one of the most important things in personal finance, but also really corporate finance, is tracking money, budgeting, right? Knowing what's going to come in, what's going to go out when. And in this challenge, we're going to look at your paycheck and how you can figure out from your kind of annual salary, how do you get down to a take-home amount? You know, what are you going to take home each pay period? That way that can drive the rest of your budget. So we're going to learn a few Excel skills along the way. So let's get into it. Here we are on the instructions page of the file. This is what you're going to see when you open it up. It has some general instructions that I'll end up covering out throughout this video. Uh, if you haven't enabled macros, the second tab kind of walks you through how to unprotect the workbook. That way you can enable the macros that are used in the scoring and kind of helping to give you some visual feedback of how things are going as you work. Now here's the main challenge, right? We're doing a take home pay calculator. We're gonna start with some annual salary, take out pre-tax deductions. So paying for things like insurance costs, uh, also your retirement contributions. And then we're gonna calculate how much tax you owe as well. And whatever's left, that'll be the take home amount. So before we get too far, let's actually dig in to the structure of the model here, right? In most of these models, you'll have this section with your parameters, any data that you need to work with. So notice here we have parameters in gray, all right? So this set of parameters here, they're actually gonna be what's called dynamic, or they're going to change whenever we reset the file. So by reset the file, I mean whenever we save it or whenever we click on this verify answers button, all right? So resetting parameters, is going to change what each of those inputs are that are going to ultimately drive the calculations in our model. Now, this is for one primary reason is that we make our models dynamic. This is a really important concept in any kind of Excel financial modeling, data modeling, is you want your solution to be general. So whatever values you put in, you're going to get the correct answer back out. So we'll emphasize that here. And so your model has to stay correct even when these parameters change. All right, so let's keep changing around. I want to get back to one of these parameter sets and we'll see why in a minute. All right, so the other things that we have here, we have some static inputs. So the FICA tax rate, this is Social Security and Medicare tax. This isn't going to change, right? So there's no sense in which that's random. So we're going to leave that always the same. And then we also have some lookup tables here. So here we have the biweekly. So you're getting paid every two weeks, costs for different insurance plans. So both medical, dental, and vision, and you have either the basic, regular, or premium level. Uh, these numbers are just illustrative to give us something to work with as far as data goes. Now, down here we have a tax table. So this is how our federal income tax withholding is calculated. And it's based on a progressive tax system. The idea that as you make more income, you pay a higher percentage of that marginal income. And we'll talk through that a little bit more when we get to that part of the case. So let's scroll down a little bit more. And now we can see the questions we're faced with. So whenever you have a question in one of these models, it's going to essentially guide you through building to that final step or the take home pay that we're interested in. Now you can see our first question is just what's your biweekly income, right? We're assuming 52 weeks in the year. If we scroll up, we see our annual salary is 55,000. So on this first one, then we can just take our annual salary, being sure to reference that input, right? You don't want to type 55,000 because that's not going to change when the parameter changes. All right, so we want to make sure we use our input. And in this case, we can multiply it by two divided by 52, right? We have two weeks in the year, two weeks in the pay period, 52 weeks in the year. So then we're going to get our answer of $2,115. Now you can see it's correct because we have our correct answers here. If you want to double check, you can click verify answers and you'll see it highlights green whenever you have correct answers here. All right, so now moving on, now we need to calculate our insurance costs. Uh, this is because often insurance costs, retirement contributions are taken out of your income before tax, meaning that that money, you don't actually have to pay tax on it. You can spend it before your tax is calculated. So it's a nice deduction that the government's giving us. So in this case, we're going to calculate three things, our medical insurance costs, our dental insurance costs, and our vision insurance costs. And it's based on which of these three plans we pick 
as our parameters. So what we need to be able to do with our medical is select the cost of the regular plan. So what you could do is come up here and say, okay, I see medical is here and the regular is here. Well, that's $50 and we can type $50 into our answer and we see it's correct, All right? We verify answers, you're still good. However, you've again hard coded the value in. As soon as we reset the parameters and verify our answers again, now we have an incorrect answer. So we want a dynamic way to look up the value that corresponds to the medical plan we picked. In this case, we picked premium, so we want to return the $100. All right, so what we're going to need is a lookup function. And there are a number of these. You can use things like index and match, or VLOOKUP is kind of an older way to do things. I'm going to show you the XLOOKUP, though. This is kind of the most modern version of how we look things up. Um, and it has a couple key arguments. All right, so the first thing you got to give an X lookup is what are you looking for? All right, in this case, we want to get data on the premium plan, right? That's our input to the model. Now, where can you find that? Well, when we did this visually, we just looked across this top row and said, all right, where is premium in that list? Is it the first, the second, or the third thing? So in this case, we can see it's the third thing, but Excel can do that for us. And what we want it to do is give back some other value. So in this case, the return array, right, this third argument, is going to be the dollar value we want back. All right. So what it'll do is it'll find the lookup value in that lookup array, so premium, and then return the corresponding item from that return array. Now, in this case, I'm going to lock using F4 to put those dollar signs on it, that first lookup array. And that's because the lookup array is not going to move, right? Basic, regular, and premium are always going to be right there. So by locking that, it's going to allow me to drag this formula down in just a minute, and I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so we hit our answer. We see that we have the correct answer of 100 now. And now when we verify our answers, we see it's correct. And even if we reset parameters and verify again, we're still correct. All right, so that's the key is we want this to be a dynamic formula, which is why we use XLOOKUP. Now, the way I set the formula up is it's set to drag down. Whenever possible, you want to reuse your model. And in this case, I can just kind of click this bottom right square, if you see that highlighted there, and drag it down a couple. And we'll see what happens when we dig into these formulas. Right? I copied my formula down, and you'll see what moved and what didn't. You'll notice what I was looking up moved from the medical plan to the basic, from the medical plan to the dental plan. Right? I'm still doing basic in both cases, but the data has moved because I slid down by one row. It also moved my return array. Right? So since medical, dental, and vision are in order, it automatically moved down to that next return array to give me the costs of the dental plans. And then if we go to the next one, we can actually see, I'm going to click F2 to get into my formula, we can see we did the same thing for vision. Right? So we can write one formula that if we use our locking, Right? The locking means those cells aren't going to move even when we drag the formula around. That's going to make us create a dynamic formula that can really move with us so we save our times of writing multiple formulas. All right, now we have our lookups taken care of. Our next step is to calculate our weekly retirement contributions, or bi-weekly. So here we have some percentage. You see in our inputs, we're saving 4% of our income. Well, if that's the case, we can just take whatever our bi-weekly income is, and then times our 4% up there. So relatively easy calculation. We're not gonna drag this anywhere, so no need to lock it at all. So we see we have our $70. I do wanna make sure I'm on the right track, so let's verify answers. We can see things are going pretty well. So now, once we get those values, we can now figure out our total income after those pre-tax uh, costs and contributions. So here we can just do a simple formula. We're gonna take total income, and then minus the sum of all those deductions from our paycheck, right? Those deductions can really add up and we wanna take that into account. And we can see we got our right answer here. So we have $1,663 now of taxable income. So this is what's gonna drive our tax calculations. And we'll scroll down so we can see a little bit more of that. All right, so we're gonna have three different taxes we have to deal with here. First is FICA, right? Medicare and Social Security. Second is state income tax, which is going to vary based on where you are, which state, and then the federal income tax. 
Now we're gonna simplify the state income tax and assume it's a constant rate. It's not gonna change based on your income. That's not always true across states, but it'll simplify the model here. All right, so first thing, let's get the FICA, right? It's not always 7.65%, but that's you know for more of a tax video than an Excel and personal finance video. All right, so we're just gonna take that and multiply it by our pre-tax income, all right? So here I'm actually gonna lock that, that way we can drag it down. All right, so we see that we owe $127 of FICA tax. If we drag that down, well, I don't have the right answer now, but I at least had that red cell not move on me. And now I can take the blue one and move that up to where my state tax rate is. All right, so I get my nice quick updating of the formula. We got our state income taxes right. All right, now with federal taxes, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. All right, and this is where we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this tax table. Now, in our case, we have about $1,600 of income. And if we look at these first columns here, we can see that if we, our wage amount, right, kind of after our contributions is between 1126 and 2100, this is the line we're gonna fall on. And in this case, we're gonna have to withhold $99 plus 22%, that's our marginal tax rate, of the amount that we make above 1,126. All right, so that's the calculation we wanna do in this case. However, if our income was lower, we might be on this line and we'd withhold $21 plus 12% of the excess over 478. Or you can imagine at these higher incomes, the same kind of calculation is happening. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what our marginal tax rate is by looking up the 1663 value in our kind of lower bounds of the tax table. So X lookup is what we're gonna to turn to again. And let's see what happens when we do the same thing we did before. So we're gonna X look up our value and we're gonna look it up in this table, All right? That's not gonna move, so I'm gonna lock it. And I wanna get back, let's just get back our marginal tax rate, All right? That's what we have there. When I run that, I get a hashtag NAR. That means it couldn't find 16.63 and 46 cents, right? Well, that number's not in this table, right? Because these are kind of boundary, boundary numbers. They're not gonna give you the exact number you're looking for. So what we initially did was exact matching with XLOOKUP because we knew we were gonna find basic, regular, or premium in the table we were building. In this case, we have to use something called approximate matching. And if we get back into our XLOOKUP function, Right, if we go to a couple extra arguments, we're gonna skip one here, but then we see the match mode. All right, match mode defaults to exact match, which is why we were getting the error message. In this case, we wanna go the exact match or the next smaller item, All right? Because in this case, 1600, well, what we wanna return is this line, right? That has between 1,126 and 2,100. So we want this next smaller thing from 1600. All right, so we're gonna do our minus one, hit enter, and now we see our marginal tax rate of 22%. You can see our answer here wasn't formatted properly, so let's build those to match. And again, let's just verify answers to make sure we're on the right track. All right, now we've got two more calculations to do. One is what is our federal tax now that we know the marginal tax rate, and then what's our take home pay? All right, so for these last two, let's start with our federal income tax. So the amount of tax we pay if we review the table again is the amount we would withhold, so 99, plus that 22% times the amount of tax minus 1126, or the amount of income to tax. So here we're gonna need a couple more XLOOKUP functions. So let's just start with our XLOOKUP function. All right, we can see what moved and what didn't. We don't wanna move our tax amount, so let's lock that and we can see this purple area slid down. So let's slide that back up to be parallel, uh, but we don't want the percentage anymore. Now we want the amount to withhold, all right? So we should get $99 here. Let's just check to make sure that that works, all right? Well, it's a weird percentage to make that a dollar and we see that we're getting the right amount, all right? Control shift four is what gave me that change to a dollar sign, to currency. All right, so, but that's not the total tax amount. It needs to be 217.20 because we've forgotten about the 22% of the amount over 1126. So to get that piece, let's copy our function. 
and we're going to add in the total amount of tax income we have minus, now we want to look up, instead of column D, we want column F. Right? We want to know where that lower threshold is. That way we can get the difference between what we actually made in income and the lower bound. And now we can multiply that whole amount times the marginal tax rate we already calculated. Once we've done that, we get our $217.20. Once we have all of our tax amounts calculated, now we just have to calculate our take-home pay, which is our total income after our deductions minus our FICA tax, minus our state tax, minus our federal tax, and we see we have 1302.37. Let's verify our answers real quick. They all show up as green, so that looks great. If we go to our results tab, we see we got 11 correct answers and 100%. So the goal on these is to make sure you can match answers, you know, follow the video, make sure your answers and formulas can match here, and then go ahead and submit on the XPREP portal. That way we can give you credit if you get all of these challenges done throughout the semester, all these personal finance Excel challenges, we'll give you a special badge for doing that. And you can also earn the MECC season badge as well. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the MECC season.